thank you for uh, attending this workshop. Uh, this is a natural continuity of what we've just been talking about. Uh, so uh, there will be two workshops, in fact, by Omic. Uh, one today on the dedicated to Gan and tomorrow uh, on, uh, on metam uh, metamorphic, on me metamorphic herbs. Uh, Gan can, as I will explain, can do everything. Uh, as I mentioned just right now, except ultra low noise. You're talking of, for example, uh, uh, an LNA with uh, 2 dB noise trigger at 90 GHz. Uh, it's not silicon, it's not GAN. Uh, it can be ion phosphide M, or it can be uh, metamorphic. So uh, today is GAN, and tomorrow metamorphic. Uh, so, uh, I will go through a few of these items and uh, first present the company. Uh, Omic has been around, as I said, uh, for a long time and uh, we are an independent company, which means uh, that we do not belong to a big guy. We are not UMS with status behind it. Uh, we, we are really, uh, we can define our strategy, we are not limited by a big company dictating, a system house dictating uh, our future. This is very important. We are a European company, which doesn't mean that we don't follow the, uh, the rules of uh, export licensing, <laughs> but I will say uh, we do it in a smarter way, and we are not Trump limited, I will say. Uh, put it that way. <laughs> As I mentioned, and this will be one of my last slides, we made a significant investment at the end uh, of last year uh, based on our GAN, uh, on silicon uh, millimeter wave process. And so uh, we were the first to have this six inch gallium nitride line in Europe. On silicon, it's the only in the world for millimeter wave. And uh, of course, uh, uh, in the US, it's GAN on silicon carbide by core. There are very few companies doing GAN at, on six inch. Uh, OMIC was created in 2000. As I said, we have more than 40 years of experience. I personally started in 1972. Uh, and uh, we are dedicated to true 5G. Uh, I, I talked about bullshitting with this 4.5G. Uh, uh, but I think that uh, if you want to have really, really a, a, a new system that is not a copy of the older system, the, 4, the 3G or 4G, you really need uh, to go up in frequency. We know that. And uh, as you know, the situation is very open. I mean, in, in China, you have given frequencies. In, in Europe, different uh, frequency uh, choices. Uh, in, in, in South Korea, it will also be different. Everyone has its own. Uh, we, we are a foundry offering the full services, which is similar to others. But we also have the epitaxial. Uh, service, which is very important. Uh, we invented the Extron reactor. Uh, Extron has invaded uh, China with their reactors for many years now. Uh, this uh, planetary reactor is essential, especially for GAN, uh, for the control of the uniformity, uh, for the control of a lot of, it, of, of uh, very good points, especially the buffer uh, in the growth. So a bit brief history, in fact, we are a, a, a baby from the big Philips Electronics, a big uh, Dutch company that uh, used to be much bigger than it is today, but they're still uh, selling shavers and uh, scanners, medical scanners. But uh, we started uh, as a research lab uh, near Paris, uh, 72, uh, 79, we were dedicated to a very big commercial application. Cost is very important, as we mentioned. And at that time, the application was direct broadcast system for a television, a satellite television, uh, at 12 gigahertz. Uh, silicon could not do that. Uh, by the way, there's something I did not mention during the, the panel, that everything that can be done in silicon will be done in silicon. So forget about it. There, there's no competition with, between 35 and silicon. You do it with silicon. If it doesn't work, you come to us. Okay? Uh, but uh, don't try to compare silicon with silicon. It's totally stupid. It's useless. You look, you're wasting your time. Uh, if, you, if it doesn't work with silicon, you, you need another solution. 
that's the problem in the, in the smartphone today. I mean, the 4, 4G, the, the, the PA is not significant because it doesn't work. Maybe it will work, but then we will be at 5G using GAN in the smartphone, okay? So it's a, it's a, it's a dynamic thing. I mean, it's moving every day, and uh, it's not static at all. In 2000, OMIC was created, founded. We, have, uh, we are represented here in this uh, exhibition hall at uh, the EFAM company. I mean, you, there are two of these uh, people here in this room, and so you can, uh, you can go there. Uh, to, to find out about our services, the foundry service, the custom design, and the catalog products. So, we are much smaller than Corvo, but the big difference here is that uh, we are extremely flexible in terms of partnership, in terms of you tell us how you want to work with us, and we will adjust. It doesn't mean that, uh, of course, the customer is king, doesn't mean that we are doing everything. You know, we have to also to, 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 to make this company profitable. Uh, the core markets are very interesting because in, in, you know the free five started as a, as a the, the key application at the beginning was defense. It still is, but it's a substrate of, it, of, of sales of, of applications. It remains there, everyone. And GAN was started for the DGA, uh, for the DARPA in, in the States. GAN was primarily intended as a technology for defense application, power application. Uh, today, we are approaching the time where telecommunication will take over. Because in microwaves, telecommunication is by far the biggest market. If you're not in telecommunication, you're not big. Uh, so uh, we, we, we are dedicated to, to 5G, uh, up to 40 gigahertz, but at the same time, we keep working on space applications for the one reason that this is uh, the most, uh, let's say, demanding application in terms of reliability, because you, you have to meet this specification of 15 years, 15 years lifetime up there. Uh, and when it comes to GAN, I can, I can immediately tell you, those who want to, to get a lot of power out of it has to go to a high current level, high voltage, and they endanger uh, the reliability of it. They are just uh, they want to get the best out of it, so it's very risky. What we did is just the other way around. We worked, for example, with 12 volts. Our DDD is 12. And this is much below what the process can do. And, it, and this is extremely good in terms of reliability. Okay. Uh, there's one application here that is also very interesting. And I will discuss, review that tomorrow. It's, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's a microwave imaging. It's a scanner. Uh, we, uh, we have developed the, the chipset for this, it's a passive scanner. And uh, we are partnering with uh, MC2, that is a, a French company, a sister company of OMIC. And uh, you can visit the, the, the stand there. Uh, you have all the details of this scanner. Uh, it's passive, and it goes through the wall. I heard that millimeter wave cannot go through the wall. This is not true. This is not true. We can discuss that. These are the supporters of 3.5 uh, of 3.5 uh, gigahertz uh, 5G. Uh, I, I will not review the details of this slide uh, of all the applications uh, behind 5G. 5G is not telecommunication. It's much more than telecommunication. It's it's instant communication between two any objects. Uh, and in particular, I want just to make one comment on this. On this. Uh, in particular, uh, it can lead to autonomous cars getting rid of the driver. But before you do that, it will get rid of this uh, collision, anti-collision radar. If you remember, 
in particular UMS, this is a, a competitor in, in Europe, uh, developed a, a, a gallium arsenide HPT chip for anti-collision radar that you find in German cars, in particular if you buy high, high tier uh, German car today, you have this uh, gallium arsenide chip in it. Uh, but this is a very strange application because today you can use silicon germanium to do it. So that's what I said. Uh, there was a time where only gas could do it. Today silicon can do it. But 5G is coming. And if the cars are talking to each other in both directions, you don't need this radar anymore. Okay? That's quite interesting. Okay. I know you don't want to be in this car. But, uh, I'm the reader, man. <laughs> But it's quite interesting because autonomous cars can get, get rid of the ship. So it's bad news for Infineon because Infineon is, is hoping to get that uh, market from uh, UMS. We're, we're not in this business. So, uh, so. Uh, this slide is very uh, busy, but anyway, it tells you that you have, uh, you have the, the various countries, uh, regions, Europe, uh, Arab countries, Africa, America, Asia Pacific, and you see, I mean, no one does agree on the on what 5G should be. Okay, so it's a mess. So all what you need to have is a technology that can address all these frequencies. Unfortunately, you will have to develop various uh, chipsets uh, with. If you want, if you are a global uh, supplier, if you are someone like Huawei or Samsung or. You know, these guys, they have to serve all these continents, otherwise they're no longer what they are. So they, but in terms of development of chipsets, it's, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a lot of work. But the technology I'm going to present can address that, okay? From 20 to 90. Uh, during the panel, I mentioned this issue of the, the front end. So the, the maker, Guy mentioned that maybe one day you will have an ADC uh, to start with. Uh, for the time being, we have a conventional uh, RF front end. And effectively, if I take this uh, massive MIMO array, which is in fact something that we've been doing for years uh, for defense applications, and even for space. By the way, we have uh, some of our, of our coaches. Uh, already in space in Europe, based on uh, on our EV technology. Uh, so, if you have gas and GAN, you have a complex hybrid solution. And I can tell you, if you have this very nice TRC here, you're much happier because you have a good price and you have something that is much more compact. And on top of that, you have a solution that is 1.5 dB low, low, lower noise than, than Como. That's why I was a bit aggressive in a few minutes. Okay, so this chip is very good. And I will talk about it. And as I said, as I said, today people think that the best way to do it is to do it in sequence, the 5 bit phase shift. And why not? If it's true, we keep it like that. There will be a GAN chip, GAN chip and there will be a, a, a silicon chip. But what it says here that we're going to develop this EP process to make it one chip. And uh, we will not be addressing the, uh, the 5G market with this, we'll be addressing different markets. But we will develop this, we are developing this EP GAN process. Uh, this is an example. I, I will discuss that tomorrow. So uh, the uh, this uh, security scanner. By the way, uh, if I'm right, uh, Luo, this this uh, box uh, sells well in in China today. Okay, so you may you may come uh, run into it in, in some airports or some. Uh, Railway stations, I don't know exactly. So today we're still offering gas, indium phosphide, 
we call in your class five and GAN, but I will focus on GAN. Okay, so uh, when we started developing GAN, we had one target, one objective, very clear, uh, to replace gas. So most of the people are uh, at lower frequency are competing with silicon. Here we are just trying to replace gas. And for that, there were a lot of uh, prerequisites. I mean, of course, better power, better efficiency. But you wanted also the noise figure to be as low as possible, even somewhat lower than on gas. Uh, and uh, this is why we went for very short get length. The first process was a 100 nanometer process. And then this one is in production today. And we are now opening, releasing the 60 nanometer. Uh, the, the, the 100 nanometer can be used up to 40 gigahertz. Uh, I will show you an example of a 47 gigahertz PA using this process. But uh, above 40, I mean, you have to go to 60 nanometer. The good news, by the way, is that uh, you can have 60 and 100 on the same chip. Okay, that's a very interesting feature of the process. You can mix because the layers, the, uh, the, 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 the epitaxial structure of the two processes are exactly the same. Okay. So we have developed effect. We have a co common substrate, common epi layer with two different gates. As I said, we're working with 12 volts. That means we are not pushing the process to its limit. We're very happy with uh, 3 watt per millimeter. It's good enough. We are not addressing very high power applications. We are addressing applications up to 10 watt. Uh, and that's it. And we're very happy with that. And this is what, we, what is needed in terms of telecommunication today at this frequency. Uh, the process is uh, has a breakdown of 40 volt. We use it at 12 volt, as I said, uh, 3.5 watt per millimeter, with an associated PAE of 48 percent. And uh, this is a comparison of the noise figure. Of the process is in the middle, and you have on both sides you have the the PM process. It's a 135 nanometer PM process, and this one is a metamorphic process, the one I will discuss tomorrow. Uh, we are at 40 gigahertz, and you see 1.7 dB, 1.5, 1.1. Okay? Okay? So, of course, you might say, I mean, this is 135 nanometer and 100 nanometer, okay? But you see, this is a very good number for a GAN process. And uh, but really the limit, the, the, the best number you get from metamorph. But you beat gas fiat with the, this GAN process. Uh, I think three or four years ago, HRL came with a paper subs subsidized by, uh, by DARPA showing all the performance you can achieve down to 20 nanometer gas. Okay? So, uh, but that, uh, HRL is not there in this business uh, as we are. I mean, they, it's, it's a lab dedicated to defense application, and, and, and this is it. We are here in a totally different situation. We want to offer you an industrial, stable, high volume process and products. And to do that, we tell you right now, we are at 60, and we have the capability, because you have to understand, I mean, when the gate is getting, is being scaled down, the, the thickness of the layers are getting thinner and thinner. So the control, a reasonable control, industrial control of this is not easy. It's, it, everyone can show a good wafer. We're talking of something industrially controlled. So we know today that we will go to 40 nanometer 
and uh, this is something that will come when it is needed. For the time being, the applications 160 will do. So, in terms of strategy for AMIC, it's clearly uh, full replacement of gas, uh, new cellular telecommunication, telecommunication market, and uh, the space market. Okay, these are the two complementary applications that we have to keep. Uh, as I said before, we have all in house, especially the AP. And uh, I have to be very clear, and I know there are some competitors in the room, so I cannot talk too much. <laughs> but uh, if you come to me later, I mean, uh, maybe I, I will tell you more. Uh, uh, there's one thing, uh, this, uh, let's say, the three five companies in the world never understood technology as silicon did. In silicon, uh, there is not AP on one side and, and, and the process on the other. It's, it's one thing. Uh, for, for the three five people, they have the AP and then they have they buy the AP or they, they, they get the AP and then they start their process. Uh, I can tell you, this process I will show you if it is a, not only a power process but low noise is because we have been capable of uh, using the AP during the process. I cannot tell you more, but during the process. So that means it's, which is for, for the free five companies, it's, it's, a, it's a headache. They, you know, to go back into the reactor during the process is a headache. Because first of all, they, usually they don't have this capability. They don't know. They, they, this is an external company supplying the reactors. Uh, supply of substrate is essential, of course. Supply of substrate, especially for silicon, uh, it has to be higher resistivity, and higher resistivity up to high temperature. Uh, because the chamber temperature again can go up to above 200, G, uh, 200 C. So you have to, to, be, uh, to be able to get this good substrate. There are very few suppliers. It's not easy. Uh, and you have to be also, uh, let's say, clear that it's more ex this substrate, silicon substrate, is more expensive than, than the, the standard silicon substrate. So when we compare with silicon carbide, uh, it's in favor of silicon, but this silicon software is a little more expensive. So this chart shows uh, horizontally you have the FT, 20 to 500 gigahertz, and vertically the breakdown. So uh, what you see here is uh, the red curve is, is GAN, the green is gas, and uh, the purple one is silicon. So silicon, by increasing the doping levels and scaling down the transistors, have been capable of going up in frequency. Uh, but the result is that the breakdown is very low. Uh, 20 nanometer uh, silicon is, is one volt uh, breakdown. Low dynamic range. So they are tricks. They are, they are stacking up transistors. They are trying to do things. Anyway, it's not as good. And uh, uh, on top of that, they have a lot of parasitics because, uh, just one word, I will go more into detail tomorrow, but silicon has a, a big, big problem. There is no RF CMOS. It doesn't exist. It's just a digital process being used by RF designers. And uh, the consequence of that is that you, you have to, to accept all these parasitics, especially the interconnect levels. And so they, you cannot scale. It, it, scaling has, has no effect. You are, you are uh, blocked at around 350 gigahertz on silicon. Here you can go because it's a true RF process. And uh, if you take a uh, 60 nanometer, 60 nanometer, you are around 200 gigahertz uh, with uh, about 20 volts. 
So this is a summary of what, what we're doing with our Ghana silicon. First of all, we are replacing all gas uh, or, or indium phosphide pellets to improve the output power, the robustness, with the same low noise at the right cost and enabling heterogeneous integration. These are the four key points. This process is a conventional MMIC process with all the, uh, let's say, the uh, passives, because as I said, when we have this discussion during the panel about the integration level, you have to remember that uh, passives are very important, combiners, and also the buyers. In fact, most of the time the chip size is dictated by the, the, the sizes of, of the buyers. So, why is our process different? I will not tell you how we achieve that, I will tell you what the result is. If you take a conventional GAN, and I don't want to give names because I will tell you that some GAN are really shitty, to speak it, to speak it, uh, to use the right word. Uh, if you want to check how good the GAN is, you have to pass the gate and see if you if you drain current, recover or not immediately. Okay, what is the reaction of the trust? Because this is a, a sign of how bad the surface states are, how bad the, the traps in the, in the material are, how stable is the process. We have done a few tricks, stable tricks, reproducible tricks, to stabilize this surface, to eliminate the traps in the bottom. And the, you have it. We have no measurable recovery time after 24 dBc aggression, plus 25 dBm input power on a 2 by 35 micron device. This was done by a neutral uh, company. This is not our result. Uh, this is very important. Uh, you know, uh, just one word on that. On gas, you have the same problem, but people have invented a recess gate, you remember. The gate is recessed. So you, you solve the problem, not by solving the problem, but by getting you away from the problem. Here, the problem is different. On GAN, it's fully planar. So because it's planar, you have to have a very good control of your surface. We have it. And this is the evidence. So the process is a, a, as a, a, a a NFT of 105 gigahertz, a maximum stable gain at 30 gigahertz of 14.5 dB, a minimum noise figure of 1.8 dB at 40, uh, a power density of 3.3 watt per millimeter at 5.7 watt per millimeter peak, a transconductance, because I mentioned the surface states, now comes the, the second problem, the RM the on the resistance how because otherwise you don't get noise figure i mean the noise figure comes from the fact that you have a good gm a low rs a low rc uh, 650 milli siemens per millimeter is what you get on gas if you look at all these other companies even Cobo, they are 400 450 okay uh, Source resistance 0.180 millimeter. The RN resistance, which is extremely important for the losses in the switch, 0.80 millimeter. Activation energy 1.78. There is the design manual uh, that we only uh, uh, provide uh, with. Uh, uh, customers, not our competitors, so it's not for all people in this room. Uh, and then I will describe a few examples of uh, demonstrators and products. Uh, the first one is a 30 gigahertz 10 watt PSAT amplifier, it's a three stage amplifier. Um, it has 12 volt 
0.7 watt per millimeter DC. And uh, the linear gain, in fact, you see at 12 volt, you get around uh, 23 and a little less than 15 volt. Uh, this was not intended for 5G, this was intended for VSAT application. Okay. This is why the, the band, uh, the 5G band is, at least in Europe, is lower than that. Uh, this amplifier, around 30, 31, delivers 35% uh, PAE. We are on silicon. Don't forget that. We are on silicon. Uh, this is the evidence that the loss in the substrate are not playing any role here. Of course, they're they are more loss. Even if we have improved that significantly, there's more loss than in silicon carbide. But we get the PA. Okay. This is another example, I mean, uh, 31 dBm, 40 gigahertz. Uh, at, uh, so it's 40 at 10 volt and 42 at 40 volt. Uh, the PAE, where is the PAE? It's also about, yes, and 30, 40, it's above 30%. The gain, let me see at the gain, the gain is above uh, 20 dB. <coughs> Another example, I told you, I mean, this process can be carried way to uh, 47 gigahertz. This, this is a very strange application. I don't even remember the application. It's a strange application in your European program. Uh, 5 watt, 18 dB gain, 18% PAE, we are at 47. So this one I already, uh, already showed, and of course what I will describe now and, uh, is this chip, the TR chip, PA, SPDT, LNA. Uh, last year, uh, there was a workshop in the States and Coho came with, uh, with this uh, chip because we know that uh, the big guys have asked us to develop this chip. And so everyone has got, tried to, to do it. Uh, we achieved, so if you take the, each function separately, we achieved 5 watt on the PA. 1 dB loss on the switch and 1.5 dB noise figure on the LNA at 30 gigahertz. And the results of that, you have it here. Uh, it's about uh, 36 dBm, if you include the loss of the, of the complete chip output, and for the Noise figure on the receiving path, we are below 3 dB. Corvo is at 4.5. The reason for that is just that their process is not optimized for low noise. That's all. Uh, it's a fact. Uh, people have developed GAN for power. They have not developed GAN for low noise. What we did, is we did both. Okay. So it's and we have not invented that. Uh, to, to, to the credit goes for to HRL. Huh? So, but of course, what we have done is we've taken the results of HRL and turned that into a real industrial product. Okay? Because uh, they, they are not using the same techniques. Uh, our process is different, uh, but we were not the first to uh, understand that GAN can be. Low noise, not only 
uh, not only power but uh, capable but also capable of loans. Uh, one word on 60 nanometer. This is early results. I uh, cannot show you much, but uh, uh, we are uh, at tw uh, two watt per millimeter at 94, uh, with a gain of 6 dB and a PAE of 15 percent. Uh, the noise figure is lower than on the 100 nanometer, slightly lower, 1.4. DB at uh, 40 gigahertz. So this is very promising, and we have uh, developed, uh, have not the results yet, so this is this is just a simulation for the time being of a 600 uh, milliwatt, 12 dB gain, 8% uh, PAE at 94. So this is something we are just going to test. So I mean, I hope that next time I come here, I have the results to show. Okay? But we are on silicon, no? So, as I said, as I said, uh, on September 26, last year, we opened the line. Uh, there was a lot of emotion because, you know, we have a new president in France called Macron. And uh, uh, we had uh, some uh, uh, deputies there coming uh, for the, this event. Uh, with the idea that maybe in Europe we can do something as good as the US. Uh, so, this is the summary of my talk. Uh, the, we have processes in GAN, and in this slide there's, I mentioned also the metamorphic pr uh, process, 70 and 40 nanometer, that I will talk about tomorrow. Uh, the combination of this 160 nanometer GAN on silicon plus the 70 and 40 nanometer metamorphic covers applications like telecommunication space and security up to 400 gigahertz and this is why we are uh, dedicated at all today. Uh, we are fully convinced that uh, but it takes time and we have to make money first with this first paragraph before we go to the next one, the 20 nanometer, but we will do it. And, uh, and we also believe that uh, the ethereal integration is possible. And to get started, it just, it can be just, uh, it's not a full, it's not the same substrate integration. It can just be at the beginning, uh, let's say, a, a flip chip uh, solution, where you flip chip, you can, uh, you get on uh, on the uh, silicon uh, on the CMOS chip, and uh, maybe the next step would be to install a line in China. Why not? Because Global Foundries is doing that. Okay. Uh, okay, that's it. If you have any question, thank you for listening.